Once the filtrate has entered the minor calyx, it is then called urine. Among some of the waste components that may be found in urine are electrolytes. The concentration of or elimination of any of these electrolytes depends heavily on the diet of the individual. Any number of protein metabolites, such as urea or ammonia, uric acid from the metabolism of the amino acid purine, or creatinine, which is exclusive to skeletal muscle. Hormone metabolites or toxins from disease, bacteria, or ingested chemicals may be in the urine at some point. The color of urine is primarily due to urochrome, which is a result of red blood cell breakdown. However, other ingested substances may affect color as well. A urinalysis includes both a physical examination of the urine and an evaluation of the solutes dissolved in the urine. The physical examination would include notation of the color and or odor. Specific gravity is an indication of solute concentration and a person's hydration status. A specific gravity of 1.0 would equal water. Of course, urine has solute, so it will always be more than one, about 1.002 or 1.035. The more concentrated the urine, the larger the number. Urine also contains sediment. To evaluate the sediment, the urine must be spun in a centrifuge and the liquid must then be removed. The remaining sediment can be removed and put on a microscope slide for evaluation. Some of the sediment may include red blood cells, which may or may not indicate a problem. White blood cells, if numerous, indicate an infection. Casts are odd-shaped mucus and protein conglomerations with other materials adhered to them formed in the distal convoluted tubule. There are many different types of casts. Only long, cylindrical, hyaline casts are found in healthy patients. Other cast types are often associated with a particular pathology. Crystals are an interesting finding in the urine of even healthy individuals. Most crystal formation occurs due to the length of the time that the urine sits before evaluation. The high solute concentration of urine increases the likelihood for precipitation of substances and form crystals. Freshly voided urine does not contain a lot of crystals, so the presence of crystals do not indicate a predisposition for kidney stones. Abnormal conditions associated with the finding of particular constituents are shown. Proteinuria is an excessive amount of protein in the urine and may indicate kidney damage allowing large protein molecules into the filtrate. Glycosuria is an excessive amount of glucose in the urine which is often associated with diabetes. Ketonuria is the presence of ketone bodies in the urine which happens in patients that are under starvation diets or diabetes type 1. Pyuria is the presence of neutrophils in the urine indicating a urinary tract infection or patients with sepsis. Hematuria is the presence of red blood cells suggested of infection, trauma, or perhaps vascular disorders. The transport of urine begins at the minor calyces to the major calyces and the renal pelvis. The ureters carry the urine out of the kidney and to the bladder. The urine leaves the body via the urethra that exits the bladder. The ureters enter the bladder on the inferior posterior region. The ureters are surrounded by a lot of smooth muscle which help move the urine from the kidney to the bladder so the urine does not rely on gravity alone. The ureters have little elasticity which makes ureters something that surgeons must take extra care not to cut as they are very difficult to repair. Inside an empty bladder are folds called rugae. Rugae allow for expansion of the bladder as it fills. The epithelial lining of the bladder is made of transitional epithelium. This appears to be many layers of cells in the recoiled or empty state. However, when expanded or stretched, there are just a couple of cell layers which also accommodates the expansion of the bladder while preserving the integrity of the lining. On the floor of the bladder is a triangular area called the trigone. The trigone is divided by two entering ureter openings and a single exiting urethra opening. This region is a smooth surface as it does not have rugae. There are two sphincters that control the outflow of urine. Urine collects in the bladder until it is stretched which stimulates the relaxation of the internal urethral sphincter which is made of smooth muscle and is involuntary. The external urethral sphincter is made of skeletal muscle and is under voluntary control. 
This is the one that remains closed when we hold it until getting to the bathroom. The urethra takes urine from the bladder to the outside. It contains a skeletal muscle, voluntary external urethral sphincter. In the male, the urethra has three segments. The prostatic urethra travels along the prostate that lies immediately below the bladder surrounding the urethra. The membranous urethra is between the prostate and the base of the penis. The penile urethra travels along the penis. In females, there is only the membranous urethra.